what were you doing on the waterfront that night? Looking at the ships. Any reason? Just looking. What happened? I started to walk. Where? Nowhere. Um, what about the car? Did you see it before it came at you? It's too late to run. Did you see the car? Yes. You remember anything about it? It was coming right at me. Do you think it was deliberate? I think so. Do you know anybody who would want to harm you? But he did it. Who's he? The man. He was a man. Do you know who he was? Never saw him before. Well, do you know what he looked like? Is it possible that he could have been tall and had very strange, intense eyes? Excuse me. Uh, Captain, just a minute, please, please. Please, please. I want to be in on this. Now, remember, you yourself asked for official help, so right. let me handle it. Laura, I'm Captain Bert Ramsey of the Port Charles Police Department. To begin with, I'm going to ask you some personal questions. I know your first name is Laura. Would you tell me your last name, please? Solwald. Solwald. Is that S-U-L-W-A-L-D? Now, uh, where do you live here in Port Charles? I don't live in Port Charles. Oh? Well, then where do you live? On a farm outside of Port Charles. Mm hmm Now, could you tell me just... what were you doing here in Port Charles? Visiting. Any special reason? Boats. I like to walk by the water. Did your family know that you were coming here to Port Charles? No. Well, I assume the hospital has notified them that she's here? Yeah. Look, Captain, I think if I... Please, I'm handling it my way, Luke. Can we please just ask her one simple question? Well, first tell me, what is the question? We need to know if she knows any man by the name of D. Gray. Did you hear that, Laura? Do you know a man by the name of D. Gray? D. Gray? That's right. Yes. No. You've never heard of him? He's very tall, and uh, he's got uh, dark hair and piercing eyes. Piercing eyes? Yeah, do you know who that is? No. Are you sure? I'm very sure. Would you like to rehearse some more? I can't keep my mind on anything except Luke's phone call. That's obvious enough. It seems to me, Robert, that every time that we are supposed to be together, you seem to be uh, someplace else. Look, do you, do you resent the time I spend looking for Laura? Are you kidding, Robert? Laura was my best friend. Well, then... I only wish there was something else that I could do to help. Well, then what is it? It wouldn't do any good. Come on, look, something's wrong. Let's talk to me. I miss Laura. We all do. I know, but I never knew anybody like her, Robert. I've never had a woman that I could, I could honestly call a friend. I mean, she used to talk to me. I mean, she used to talk to the real me, you know, like, you know, like this plastic, la-di-da person that most of my friends see. I can understand that. Can you really? If you, um, if you could, you know I'm, I'm hurting inside, Robert. About Laura. That's part of it. 
you feel responsible. How did you know? Well, I'm not totally insensitive, but listen, you, you're wrong to feel that way. Well, if I had introduced her to Mickey in the first place, she would never have gotten Miss Star Eyes. And if she hadn't gotten Miss Star Eyes, she'd never gone to New York, and she'd still be here with us. I just feel so guilty about it, Robert. I mean, like there's something I should have done to protect her. Each of us, in his own way, feels responsible for what happened to Laura. I miss not having a friend. But I'm your friend, love. Are you really? Yeah. We've been through a lot together. A lot. Everybody needs a friend. Jesse, I do appreciate you taking me in like this. Sex, what are friends for? Uh, where shall I put the suitcase? I'll put it any place for now, because I think we really ought to talk. Yes, I guess you are wondering what's going on. And that is the understatement of the year. Well, I couldn't say anything to you on the phone, because, you see, Jeremy was sitting right in the room. Well, I assume somebody was there, whatever. Yeah. Uh, where's Tommy? Tommy, thank heaven, is on holiday. He's off backpacking with some friends. Oh, well, I figured somebody was there anyway. But I, I'm, I'm totally puzzled. Well, I, I, I can only stay just a couple of days. You stay here as long as you like. But I think you're avoiding an issue. Jesse, it's just awful. Well, I'm sure it's awful to make you walk out on Steve and your whole family. I didn't just walk, I ran. Audrey, what's going on? That woman had the nerve to show up at the hospital. What woman are you talking about? Vivian Collins, the woman who spent two weeks with Steve at that medical convention in New York. I simply do not believe it. Well, then you can imagine how I felt when I found out. There has to be some sort of mistake. Oh, I wish there were, but I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that Steve was having an affair with that Vivian. Steve is not that kind of man. No, I didn't think he was either. I also didn't think he was the kind of a man who lied. Oh, I think what would he lie about? He lied about his hotel accommodation. Now, you know perfectly well he always stays at that hotel in Manhattan. Yes, I know it, but he always gets a single room. What makes you think he didn't this time? Because I saw the bill. It was registered to Dr. and Mrs. Hardy. Well, all right. That could have been a computer slip-up. Yes, that's what Steve was trying to convince me of. Okay, then what's the problem? The problem is that I called the hotel myself. There was no mistake. That is exactly the way he was registered. Steve is not that kind of person. Oh, Jesse, if you're not convinced yet, let me give you a topper. I mean, there's something worse. Do you remember that Dr. Acton who came to the hospital just a few days ago? Yeah, the one Steve took on tour. Yes, that very same one, who was so nice to Steve. Right in front of me, she said how pleased she was to meet his wife, Vivian. Oh, come on, Jesse, Audrey. you were not ten feet away! I didn't take it seriously. Oh, that Vivian creature was drinking drinks in my husband's room and pretending to be his wife. Well, how are you feeling now? I'm exhausted. Too tired to rehearse again? Robert, I'm not tired physically. Emotionally? I'm drained. What else is bothering you? Everything, Robert. Well, your career? Well, yes. My career, I think it's probably washed up by now. And I don't think the Cassidines have anything to do with it. I think it's just me. I spend all my time seemingly worrying about men. There was Victor, and now there's you. I just kind of let my uh, career get shelved for a while, and I just sailed off into the sunset. You'll always be beautiful. Is that enough? Mm, not for what? For you. Hey. Now, how did the subject of me creep into the conversation? Robert, well, that's what's bothering me most of all. Me? Well, you and me, our relationship. I, um... Uh, Kind of see that slipping away, too. Come on, you're being ridiculous. Oh, come on, Robert, think about it. What's to think about? Oh, would you give me a chance, please? All right, I'm thinking. Okay. Now think back to the time where we, uh, we first met. When I was picking Victor's pocket for the formula? No, 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 when we really first met. We were on the island, remember, and we were climbing down the pathway, and... We were running so fast, I uh, almost knocked you over. And we were both scared to death. Yeah. That was quite a moment. Mm-hmm. 
especially the time when your, uh, your eyes locked mine. There was a lot of electricity there, Robert. There was a lot of fire. I've been on my own a long time then, Tiffany. I really wanted you. Do you still want me now? Of course I do. Do you really, Robert? Luke, what are you, going for the psychic act? Yeah, that too. Listen, I've been going crazy wondering what you learned from this accident, Victor. Nothing. Oh, hell. What's wrong, Robert? Nothing. Oh. Hey, but look, the witness swore up and down that, the, that she'd been hit on purpose. The girl was hit on purpose. Yeah, well, and Laura Solwald, I think that's her name. Uh, that's the victim. She swears that the car was aiming right for her, but... She doesn't know anything about a D. Gray. Not the name or the description. So she knows nothing about what happened to Al Laura? No, and she can't help Jackie with what happened to her sister either. <sighs> well, that was a waste of time. Yeah, look, we're gonna go over to Kelly's and drown ourselves in coffee. Do you and Tiffany wanna come along? On our way. Come on. Thank you. Well, Robert and Tiffany are gonna meet us at Kelly's later. Well, let's just hope they're not in a good mood because we're likely to bring the party right down. So what? Just another dead end. But I was counting on it. So was I. How about does it? Yeah, for now, anyway. What do you mean, Luke? Well, Captain, I'm not going to give up. We'll just come up with another plan. No. I've got to find her. Both of them. I'm sorry, of course. Look, I've got to get back to the clinic and help us. Oh, Rick, thank you for everything. I just wish I could have done more. You've been great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you. Luke, I'm sorry this didn't pan out. Yeah, I know you are. Of course, I'll keep the file active. And if it's any help, I'm determined to find the driver of the car that hit Laura. Do you think you can do that? Well, it won't be easy, but I have the manpower, and I'm certainly going to pursue it. Well, maybe that'll lead to something for us. I hope so. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye. Rick just told me about the accident victim. I'm very sorry. Yeah, we all are. Uh, look, Dan, I told Ruby that I'd tell her what happened. Do you know where she is? Well, that's all right. Look, I'll fill her in. Oh, okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> just wish I had something better to tell her. Yeah. yeah. How beautiful. Yeah, I thought some flowers might brighten up the room. Oh, Dan, the room is terrific. I can't thank you enough. I just wish I could make everything else go as smoothly. What does that mean? Luke. Bad news? Yeah. The accident victim couldn't help him find Laura. Oh, he must be so disappointed. Mm. He'll get over it. And he'll find something else. I guess. He's pretty resourceful. Yes, he is. And that's why I don't want you to worry about him. How could I not? Listen, you've got to start thinking about yourself. Look, one more thing about Luke. What's that? He doesn't know I'm here, does he? I told you I wouldn't say a word about it, and I haven't. But how about somebody else? Ruby, I just talked to Luke upstairs, and he doesn't have the vaguest notion that you've checked into the hospital. But I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. What does that mean? Ruby, be realistic. You've got a lot of friends in this hospital who care a great deal about you. Sooner or later, some of them are going to find out. And sooner or later, one of them is going to tell Luke. I guess you're right. Then why all the secrecy now? Because I haven't been operated on yet, and I don't want him waiting and worrying. He'd want to know about the operation, Ruby. He loves you. And I love him, too. All the more reason I don't want him worrying about me. Women. It's too bad they didn't make them all like you. Oh. Women. I suppose you haven't found Audrey yet. I even tried her sister in Utah, thinking she might know something. Well, maybe she went shopping. With a suitcase? Oh, you guess you're right. Yeah, the only place I haven't called yet is Jesse's. Look, no offense, Steve, but do you mind if I get back to my novel? Yeah, yeah, you go ahead with that. I'll try Jesse's. Great. Maybe Jesse knows where Audrey is. Somebody has to know where Audrey is.
Hello. Jesse, it's Steve. Hello, Steve. Look, I know this sounds ridiculous, but uh, I can't seem to locate Audrey. No, it doesn't sound ridiculous at all. Would you have any idea where she is? As a matter of fact, she's right here with me. Oh, uh, will you ask her to come to the phone? I'll ask her. Uh, hold on, please. He wants to talk to you. I don't want to talk to him. What am I going to tell him? I don't care what you tell him. I am not going to touch that phone. Steve, I'm sorry she refuses. Refuses to do what? She won't come to the phone. Women. Huh, grown-ups. Oh, Luke, I was waiting to talk to you, but now I've got to get back to my office. You have news? Well, it's all negative. I just talked to the police lab and got the report on Laura's purse and wallet, and it was all tested thoroughly. And? Once again, bad news. There weren't any fingerprints that we didn't know of, and no stains. Stains? Well, I had them checked for blood stains, but there weren't any. Oh, I guess that's good news. Well, at least it's not alarming. Try not to worry too much. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hi, you too. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Luke. How are you? Hi, babe. Coffee? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, love. Well, what can I say? It's really nothing to say, pal. I didn't expect the cops to help much. God, it's just that we waited so long. God, I really counted on it. Well, see, the girl's name is Laura. She was deliberately hit by a car the same night that her sister and my wife disappeared, and they all have long blonde hair. So the girl has absolutely no help at all, then? Well, she believes the car hit her on purpose, which is one point supporting our theory. But she knows nothing about a Mr. D. Gray, so we have to write it off as a coincidence. Are you sure she's telling the truth? She seems straightforward enough. She seemed very willing to answer any questions. What are you getting at, Robert? Just a stab in the dark at saving the lead. No, forget it. I really don't think the lady has anything to hide. We, we could have helped her. I'm, I'm interested in helping myself, all right? Well, I think we should get back to tracing Mr. D. Gray, then. Yeah, he's the only tangible thing we have going so far. We will find D. Gray. I hope so. I really do. Count on it. Tomorrow, Harris and Dietrich could bring down the house when they have to hide out in a hotel room with a scared witness on Barney Miller. And on Tampa.